Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Saturday held bilateral talks with his counterparts from Mali, Central African Republic, Uganda and Cameroon on the sidelines of the Russia-Africa Partnership Summit in Sochi. During his talks with Mali's Foreign Minister Abdoulaye Diop, Lavrov praised the relationship between the two countries. We consider Mali our reliable partner, an important ally on the African continent, and we value our cooperation in the United Nations, he said. Lavrov also used to opportunity to criticize the West for what he called, selectively, applying the Charter of the United Nations. The West wants to selectively, like from a menu, choose the principles of the Charter that are suitable for them at a particular moment in time, while ignoring the others. Ahead of bilateral talks, Lavrov and the Foreign Minister of the Central African Republic, Sylvie Bipotemin, signed an agreement on the mutual elimination of visa requirements for holders of diplomatic and service passports between two countries. According to a statement by the Russian Foreign Ministry, the two ministers discussed issues related to the development of friendly relations with a focus on promoting projects in the areas of exploration and development of raw materials, agriculture, healthcare and personnel training. Lavrov also discussed issues of bilateral cooperation with his counterparts from Uganda and Cameroon, Jij Abubakar Odongo and Lejeune Belambela respectively. The first ministerial conference of the Russia-Africa Partnership Forum began on Saturday with two days of talks to be held over the weekend. Forum of Russia-Africa Partnership, uh, which is being convened on the basis of the agreement reached last year at the Russia-Africa Summit in St. Petersburg, where we uh, highly appreciated the participation and interventions of President Museveni. Uh, he was really very vocal, promoting principles of justice, mutual interest, mutual respect in international affairs. Уважаемый господин министр, дорогие друзья, конференцию министров иностранных дел. Russia has stepped up its use of an improved glide bomb that has its own engine and can be launched from a much greater distance, the Telegraph reports. The publication notes that Russia has been using gliding bombs for a long time, but planes still have to fly to a potentially dangerous distance from the front. To reduce these risks, the Russians created a modified Grom E-1 bomb with a total weight of about 600 kilograms, equipped with a rocket engine. Thanks to this, the bomb is capable of flying up to 120 kilometers after being dropped from an aircraft. A Sukhoi bomber that drops a Grom E-1 at maximum range must remain out of reach of all but the best and rarest of Ukraine's air defense systems, such as its precious American-made Patriots, the author of the publication notes. According to the publication, in February and March, bombs of the Grom E-1 series hit a school and a residential building in Mernahrad and Kherson, respectively. In August, another Grom E-1 exploded in Kharkiv. Recently, on October 29th, a Grom E-1 blew up a medical facility in Kharkiv and hit the Gosprum building, which is an architectural monument of world significance. The Telegraph suggests that Russia has increased its use of Grom E-1 bombs because of the threat from F-16 fighters, which are capable of intercepting Russian aircraft at a distance of up to 65 kilometers. If there is any consolation for the weakened Ukrainians, it is that Russia's supply of Grom E-1S may be limited. The Kremlin has mass-produced the unpowered, ready-to-go KABs, but it is unclear whether similar industrial growth has occurred for the Grom E-1 engines, which are certainly much more expensive than the KABs, the author adds. Ukraine responds with strikes using French hammer bombs and their local analog, as well as American JSOW. However, their range, about 64 kilometers, leaves Ukrainian aircraft in the zone of destruction of Russian S-300 and S-400, as well as Su-30 with R-77 missiles, it is emphasized in the material.
A woman was taken to the hospital after getting caught between the crossfires of an apparent road rage shooting incident near a Philadelphia college. Footage shows what appears to be a firearm on the street as police rope off the crime scene. According to local reporting, two drivers were shooting at each other near Temple University, and that law enforcement apprehended the suspects. The police said the woman was in one of the suspect's passenger seats when the incident happened. Giant diesel tanks caught fire Saturday in a residential Beirut neighborhood burning more than a dozen cars in a parking lot and damaging a building nearby. Firefighters and civilians tried to extinguish giant flames. A local paramedic at the scene said no one was hurt in the fire that spread quickly. The fire in Beirut's commercial Hamra district came amid an ongoing Israel-Hezbollah war and after a night of airstrikes by Israel's air force on Beirut's southern suburbs. Lebanon has been witnessing long hours of power cuts by the state's electricity company and most people rely on private neighborhood generators despite the dangers of storing fuel in heavily populated residential areas. Let's go. 